First things first, you need to pick your framework. Now, you can use the standard library to expose a HTTP server. You can use Fiber. You can use whatever you like. In my project, I'm using Fiber. Uh, I'm not necessarily a fan of Fiber, but it does the job, and I'm just sticking with it as I, quite frankly, do not want to refactor this project. Um, so the first thing you will want is some type of views directory. Now, this will store all of your template files in it, right? So for me, I've got quite a few different directories here. We'll get into what these files mean in a second. But the first thing you, you actually need is some type of layout file, which actually will go and uh, import the HTMX uh, CDN. So that means all of your elements will get access, of course, to the HTMX attributes and you can then use, you know, HX post, HX swap, all of the attributes and you get access to the library. So I'm sure you're fairly familiar with how HTMX works, but let's go over a very quick use case on how to use it. So I use HTMX obviously in this entire application, the whole thing runs from it, but uh, a very quick example on why it's so powerful and why it's useful is this very quick thing here, right? So add experience, this has gone and made a HX get request, so just a normal get request to go and get this form. If I then fill in this form with some more test values and I click save, this has now made a HX post request and it's also appended the HTMX response or the HTML response, sorry, from the endpoint into this list of experience items beneath it. Uh, and this is literally a few lines of HX attributes, right? It's not a lot of stuff going on here. It does, it's a simple framework, but it does, it's simple but powerful, right? It enables you to build things quickly, which is sometimes definitely what you want to be able to do as an engineer, right? You need a way of returning partial files from your endpoints. That is how HTMX works, right? You want to return a section of HTML rather than JSON. So the way I do this is I have all of my components that need to be returned as a partial with an underscore in front of the file name, right? So that means anything that hasn't got com is actually an entire page. So Fiber itself, the framework, will render the entire page using its own templating engine under the hood. Whereas I want to just return or load in, let's say, these template files into the full pages using HTMX. So you need a few things to be able to do that. So first things first, you need some type of way of passing in the files in memory to your application. Now, I use the Go standard library to do this using the HTML template package. I simply have a pass files function. Now, I just tell Go to go and look in the template directory, which currently is hard-coded and will be moved to an environment variable. Don't worry. Uh, and I tell Go to look for any file that starts with com underscore in any directory. And it, I think it will recursively look through any directories and it will go pull those out, pull them into memory, into a template, uh, and it will pass the, the bytes of that uh, file. And then that way you'll see here that in this uh, template uh, variable here i'll have all of the template files in memory right so i just do a, a simple loop around those and i print out all of the file names just so i'm sure they're all actually in the application uh, you're then going to need a way of actually returning the html from an endpoint so if we go to handler and we go to handler.go now handler is just all of my endpoints right so these just return partials or they do a full page render all of that jazz so I use this render component function. So the name kind of tells you exactly what that does. It looks for the component based on the template string, the name of the template that I pass in, and it will execute that template with any variables. So like the experience variable, and it obviously will set the content type text slash HTML, because of course we're using HTML here and not uh, JSON. And then I just go and return those bytes from my bytes buffer, right? So that's quite a simple function again. If we go to like the engineer experience thing here, uh, this is kind of how you use it, right? So for example, uh, let's have a quick look. So you'll notice here that the ed experience form is returned if there is an error and I return it with any fields that are set. So that way fields in forms still keep their value even if there is an error, just so it's a nicer experience for the user. Um, and you'll notice here that I also pass in things like errors because I have special logic in this render component function that will go and kind of add errors to the template variables so they're accessible in partials. Um, and if we look at what a component actually looks like as well, which is quite useful, uh, this is kind of a component template file. Now, because HTMX is all based kind of on IDs and elements on your page, 
I find it really useful to define an ID variable in my component. That way I can reuse this throughout the entire template file and not having to, which saves me having to kind of manually, you know, actually write this everywhere, right? So again, based on our example I've just shown you, I'm using hx patch, which goes and gets an experience item. Now this endpoint will go and do any, any of the business logic. So it will do anything that needs to be, it needs to happen when you update an experience item and it will just return the new one in this in another template file component uh, which would be you know this this uh, component here and i define the swap strategy so for me at the moment i use inner html on this one obviously there's cases where you want to append html to a list there's all different swap strategies you'll need um, and of course the main thing you're going to need is setting the id of the target of what you want to swap and where it needs to go um, so like down here for example if i add an experience item again this cancel button changes the whole outer html because i don't need this form if you press cancel so quite simply it hides all that right so that's that's quite a powerful thing like pe people will say you can just use javascript to do this and 100 percent you can there's nothing wrong with doing that but for the sake of speed and simplicity that works really nicely especially if you're a go engineer you're going to be a big fan of this because it puts more of your application on your server it doesn't mean you necessarily couple your application to your server because as long as you do you follow some certain kind of software architecture patterns you can still get those layers away from coupling stuff too much right so it's, it depends how you architect your service but you can do that um so that's kind of it right if we do a little breakdown you need a way of passing template files components into your application you need a way of returning actual full page render files so like i said for me i'm using fiber so if I go to the handler directory and we go to like pages, pages, I just use this template util.render function, which actually just calls c.render, which is fibers under the hood rendering engine. And that just renders a file. So this is like recruiter slash sign up. If I go to views down the bottom here and I go to recruiter, I have the sign up page here, right? And that just is a simple page. Currently that's actually just using a form and not HTMX. Um, but a lot of my application does use it and I'm, you know, the more code I add, the more, the more kind of how much I enjoy it really, you know, it's, it's been really nice to do lots of stuff with this application. Um, you know, even little things like logging out there that uses HTMX under the hood to do a page refresh from the endpoint. So the application knows it's been logged out and it needs to do a hard refresh. Um, and that, so the way that works is that I, I essentially set HTTP headers um, to enable me to uh, to do that right um, but there's there's lots of stuff you can do like if I just very quickly show you one other thing things like the error handling is super easy right like this is just a go map returning errors and it's just rendering the same form with those errors in it so definitely get on the HTMX boat if you're a go engineer and I hope this just gave you a very quick idea of how you can set up your application and kind of go from zero to a hero uh, with HTMX. Um, if there's anything you don't agree with, please drop it as a comment. I, I like criticism. I like feedback. So hit me with it. Um, and hopefully, again, this has got you from zero to hero in HTMX.